in this video, we're going to be talking about how we can carry out the Wilcoxon signed rank test. Now, in the previous couple of lessons, we were carrying out a single sample signed test under the conditions or assumptions that the data is independent and that the underlying data is continuous. Now, we can refine the signed test by performing a Wilcoxon signed rank test. Now, the Wilcoxon signed rank test assumes that the population distribution is symmetrical. So, this is important for you to note. Now, let's talk about how we carry out the test. Number one, we calculate the differences between the median and the data points given. Next, we assign ranks to the absolute values of the differences in order of increasing size. Then we're going to give each rank the same sign as the original value. Next, we calculate P, which is the sum of the positive ranks, and Q, the sum of negative ranks. After that, we find the test statistic. Here, the test statistic, T, is the smaller of P and Q. So we say that T is the minimum of P and Q, like this. Lastly, we can then reject the null hypothesis if T is less than or equal to the appropriate critical value found in the tables. So I will be showing you how to use the tables in the following example. So let us look at this question here. It says the times in milliseconds taken by a computer to perform a task were recorded on 10 randomly chosen occasions. The times were as follows. So we have all this data here. It is claimed that the median time to complete the task is 6.4 milliseconds. So on A, carry out a Wilcoxon signed rank test at the 5% significance level to test this claim. Alright, so here we are going to start with the now hypothesis. And for the now hypothesis, we are saying that from the claim, the median time to complete the task is 6.4 milliseconds. So that's the now hypothesis here. So for the alternative hypothesis here, we are saying that the median time to complete the task is not equal to 6.4 milliseconds. So these are the two hypotheses. So I think you can notice from the alternative hypothesis that this is a two-tailed test. And this is at 5% significance level. So that's the test we want to carry out. Okay, so here I'm now carrying out the procedure for the Wilcoxon signed rank test. So I'm going to make some table here, starting with a column on the times, which are represented by T. And from the data given in the question, the entries are 6.44, 6.13.4 and lastly we have 6.28 so I'll be making a table here so I'll have a line coming down like this okay and to make a column down so for the next column I'll write the differences of these data points with the median, which is 6.4. So I'll be subtracting 6.4 from each of the values. 
Okay, so here that's going to be 6.44 minus 6.4, which is 0 0.04. 6.16 minus 6.4, that's minus 0 0.24. 5.62 minus 6.4, that's minus 0 0.78. So we do the same for all the entries. So here we'll be having minus 0 0.58, 0 0.11, 0 0.22, minus 0 0.21, 0 0.02, minus 0 0.06, and minus 0 0.12. So these are the differences. Okay, so I will need the absolute value of these differences. So for the absolute value, that's t, that's modulus of t minus 6.4. So I'll make a column for this. Okay, so that's 0 0.04. Then the absolute value here for all negatives, they become positive, right? So it becomes 0 0.24. 0 0.78, 0 0.58, 0 0.11, 0 0.22, 0 0.21, 0 0.02, 0 0.06, and 0 0.12. So I now have the absolute values. So next, I'm going to rank these values, okay? Starting with the smallest. So the smallest value here is 0 0.02. So I'll give it a rank of 1. Then followed by 0 0.04. So I'll give it a rank of 2. Then followed by 0 0.06. I'll give it a rank of 3. Then 0 0.11. That's rank 4. Then 0 0.12. That's rank 5. Then the next one should be 0 0.21. So that's rank 6. 0 0.22 is rank 7. 0 0.24 should be rank 8. 0 0.58 rank 9. 0 0.78 rank 10. So I have ranked these absolute values. So the last column that I can have here is the column for the signed rank. Okay. So I'll write here signed rank so i'm just gonna put back the signs the original signs that we had on the differences here to these ranks okay so two was originally positive eight with a negative on it so that's minus eight then for ten that's minus for nine that's negative so that's minus nine then we have four we have seven then this one here six is minus so that's minus six one is positive three is negative and five is negative so that's minus five here so these are the sign ranks so that's the table we need to make okay so here p which represents the sum of positive ranks here means we are adding all the positive ranks so we are adding two plus 4, plus 7 here, plus 1 here. And adding these, we should get 14. Then for Q, which is the sum of negative ranks, that's 8, plus 10, plus 9 here, then plus 6, plus 3, plus 5. And this gives us 41. So here, the test statistic is the smaller of the two. So we're going to use 14 as the test statistic. Now from here, we need to find the critical value. And for the critical value, we're going to make use of the tables. So let's go to the tables. So these are the tables for the Wilcoxon signed rank test. Okay, so here, if I scroll down, to the tables themselves here we find the tables and the key is written right here above 
where they're saying that for each value of n, the table gives the largest value of t, which will lead to rejection of the null hypothesis at the level of significance indicated. So these are the values that we find here inside the tables. That's the largest value of t, which will lead to the rejection of the null hypothesis. Okay, so for this particular test, it's a two-tailed test at 5% significance level. So we are looking at the column on 0 0.05. And our sample size is 10, so down here, which means the critical value here is 8. Okay, so what does that mean? It means that if the test statistic is less than 8, then it lies in the rejection region, and so we can reject the null hypothesis. But if the test statistic is greater than 8, then it lies in the acceptance region where there's insufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis. So let's go back to the question. So here, the critical value came out as 8. And we can notice that 14 is greater than the critical value 8, which therefore means that there is insufficient evidence to reject the now hypothesis, which is the claim. Okay, so that's how we perform this test. All right, let's go on to part B. It says, state an underlying assumption that is made when using a Wilcoxon signed rank test. Okay, so like we said, the underlying assumption for a Wilcoxon signed rank test is that the data is symmetrically distributed about the median. So that's how we can answer that part. And that's it for this question here.